Welcome to Book Club Preview. I'm Michael, and today we're looking at Warriors Fire and Ice, Chapter 13. And this chapter, oh man, things get a little tense between friends. It starts off with Tiger Claw, uh, well, with Fireheart helping Cinderpaw and Brackenpaw carry all of their kill back to camp. They'd killed so many that they needed help. When Tiger Claw sees this, he's a little suspicious, and he's like, "Did these apprentices catch all this by themselves?" And Tiger and Fireheart's like, "Yeah, they did." So Tiger Claw's like, "Okay, good." And uh, then he says, "All right, come on, Blue Star wants to talk with you." Fireheart's a little embarrassed, a little worried, but his apprentices look at him like, "Whoa, you gotta go talk to Blue Star. That's awesome." And so Fireheart goes and um, gives Blue Star kind of an update. Um, what he's been training the kids, how well they're going, um, how well they're hunting and um, learning and stuff like that. And Blue Star's like, okay, yeah, Brackenpaw, good, good. Um, well, how about Cinderpaw? Uh, she seems a little reckless. And Fireheart says, oh, uh, yeah, she's just really eager. And so Blue Star says, okay, well, I'm afraid her eagerness uh, might get her hurt. Fireheart feels a little um, hurt about this. Oh, and I don't, in this book, Fireheart's just so sensitive. I think he's like a middle school student. In book one, he's like an elementary school student. Everything is just kind of pure in his mind. But in this book, he's like a middle school student. Everything is about him. Everything is personal. Um, so when Blue Star says this, talking about Cinderpaw, Fireheart feels hurt about it. But then Blue Star says, you've been doing a great job, though. I believe you can help her. In fact, I want you to take on the full training of both of these apprentices, especially while Graystripe is um, sick. Uh, Tiger Claw's not that happy about this, but Fireheart's like, whoa, dang, thank you. And, um, and then she's like, okay, uh, your friend Graystripe just arrived. Go take your bird and go eat it with him. Now... Tiger Claw had asked before, hey, where's Graystripe? And Fireheart's like, uh, I, he's probably with uh, Yellowfang getting some medicine. And Tiger Claw's, hmm, maybe. And then they see Graystripe by the nursery, and Tiger Claw says, look, there's your friend, Graystripe. He just arrived. And he's like, oh, um, he was probably trying to find a nice, quiet spot to sleep. And Tiger Claw says, maybe. And then he's like, okay, well, I gotta go. He goes over to Graystripe, and he tells Graystripe, Hey, man, look, where have you been? Have you been leaving the camp? And he's like, Yeah, I have been. What's up? Um, he's like, Well, Tiger Claw keeps asking about you. <gasps> oh, man, Tiger Claw? He's like, Yeah, but don't worry. I covered for you. Oh, thanks. He's like, Well, man, ha have you been leaving the camp? Have you been going out? And Graystripe doesn't really answer him. He says, Okay, man, oh, I'm so tired. I'm going to go to bed. And he takes off. And Fireheart feels like, uh, man, there's something missing here. He thinks about Graystripe, kind of had no scent on him. And then he realized that man, when he goes and visits his sister, he licks the scent off of himself. And he thought, oh, man, does Graystripe have some kind of secret? And then he sees this little like seed or leaf, I'm not too sure, from a plant on the river clan side of the forest. And he sees this and he's like, has Graystripe been going in to see the river clan what in the world is going on he can't get any answers from Graystripe because he's already asleep so he goes in the warrior's den and goes to sleep too in the morning running wind wakes up fireheart and he's like hey it's really cold huh and he's like yeah he's like Yo, you're not sick or anything you okay it's like no no i'm i'm okay and running wind i, th I think it's a her it says hey look uh blue star thought you'd be really tired today so she asked if i could help you with the apprentices and I said, yeah. And Fireheart's like, whoa, yeah, that, that'd be great. Um, yeah, let's go train the apprentices. But Fireheart's mind is 100% on Graystripe and Graystripe's secret, especially fearing that Graystripe might have gone into RiverClan territory. So they're trying to train the apprentices, and Running Wind is just like, yeah, hey, man, Fireheart, what, uh, what are you going to teach him today? What are you going to do? And Fireheart's like, oh, let, let's learn about stalking. And the kids are like, oh, man, we don't want to learn about stalking again. The apprentices. 
And he's like, oh, let me show you this um, really good way to stalk this animal. But he does it. And then he realized he was showing a different stalking technique. And everyone kind of laughs at him. He's feeling a little embarrassed. He's like, hey, uh, running wind. Because all he can think about is gray stripe. He's like, um, my tummy hurts. I'm going to go to Yellow Fang and get something for it. Can, can you take care of the apprentices for me? And running wind's like, you know what? I thought you looked a little bit off today. Um, yeah, man, go ahead. I'll, I'll be watching the apprentices. Go get something for your tummy. He's like, oh, thank you so much. He takes off. He takes off and he goes behind the nursery where that little hole where Yellow Fang snuck out of in book one and where Graystripe has been sneaking out of. He goes to the other side and hides behind a tree waiting for Graystripe. And finally Graystripe comes out and then Fireheart follows him very carefully and Graystripe ends up going to the river into River Clan territory. Fireheart is freaking out. Even worse, he sees a River Clan warrior jump into the river, come out. It's a uh, silver stream. And Raven, Raven, uh, Gray Stripe and River Stream start to kiss and like rub their heads on each other like cat love. And Fireheart's like, What is going on? This is dangerous. This is not right. And in fact, he's going to do something about it. Let's look at some vocabulary. Plummeted is like a going down very fast. Um, maybe uh, Fireheart's like pride. He's like, oh man, I'm so happy my apprentice is. And then Tigerclaw says something and his pride and happiness goes, Bah! It plummets. Feverish means your temperature is high. Um, we call that a fever. Fever-ish, meaning it's starting to feel hot. Up to. What are you up to? Uh, what are you doing? Uh, we kind of use up to to show like what is some, some, something that you're doing that you probably shouldn't be doing. Uh, we can also ask this as a friend like, hey man, uh, what are you up to? What's going on? Just a very simple way. So it can be very friendly or it can be kind of suspicious. Your mom asks, what are you up to in there? <laughs> what sneaky thing are you doing that I know you shouldn't be doing? Rain laden. Um, laden means carried or burdened with, loaded on. So uh, these rain laden, uh, what is it, leaves, scent? Uh, I can't remember exactly, but something holding on to the rain. The smell, ominous, which you've had before, but that means um, something terrible, perhaps coming, or scary, or dangerous. Distinctive is something very unique and different. That leaves us with our discussion question. Have you ever felt guilty after lying. Fireheart tells Running Wind, oh, my stomach hurts. Can you take care of the apprentices? And Running Wind's like, yeah, no problem. I got it. Fireheart actually felt a little guilty lying so easily to Running Wind and Running Wind believing it. Have you ever felt guilty after lying to someone? And of course, please make your own discussion question. That is all the time that we have for today. But thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Book Club Preview. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.